Hi everybody, this is Laura. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have a layout that I made using the December My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit. For this layout, I wanted to make some Christmas trees. I'm using some strips of paper. I picked out some strips of blue paper, various pattern paper strips, and then I also have some of the dotted green paper on the right hand side. I am using some distress inks and distress oxides to ink the edges of all of them. For the blue paper, I used distress oxide in Stormy Sky. For the pattern papers, they had a lot of pink in them. I used the distress oxide in Victorian Velvet. And then for the green papers, I used distress ink in Vintage Photo. I cut out some triangles from some smooth white cardstock. I drew a line going straight down the center of them just to give me an idea of where the center was as I was putting the strips on the paper. I put down some ATG adhesive, which I always forget. It kind of makes a little bit of a mess when it goes over the pencil line. It spreads it out and I don't like that even though it gets covered up, but I always forget to use pen. But in any case, you can't see it once it's done. I put the strips down in a V pattern. I put one strip down on the right, one strip down on the left, and then I alternate back and forth until the entire triangle is covered with the strips of paper. And then I ink the edges of all of the trees. First I inked it with some Stormy Sky, and then later on I went back and I inked it again just so that these trees would stand out from the background I'm going to be using. I continued that same process with the other four trees and then I moved on to my background. I'm going to be using a whole bunch of sprays. I picked out all of the gold sprays that I had in my stash. I have quite a number of different colors of gold, but they weren't all the color I had in mind. I was thinking in my head when I planned this out of having a yellowish gold background and it ends up being a little bit more like a brassy gold. I ended up being happy with the brassy gold. I started off with a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. The color is called Gilded Gold, and that's the yellowish color that I was originally thinking of, but it was very transparent, and I also wanted the background to be a little darker than this. My thought was that I would layer all the different colors of gold together and create an interesting background that, as I said, was a little bit darker. Now I'm going to add a Distress Mica Stain. This one is called Crooked Broomstick. And this one is definitely a little bit more of a, I guess I would say brass than a gold color. This is a Tim Holtz color from one of the Halloween collections. And this was definitely immediately darker than what I had pictured. So I lifted up some of the color. I should mention that the paper that I'm using is a gessoed piece of cardstock, so it's not too hard to go back in and lift up some of the color. I didn't dislike the color. I just thought there was a little bit too much of it. It was a little bit too dark. So I sprayed some water on it, as you saw, and then I rolled the paper towel over the top. That got rid of a lot of the excess color. And then this will also pick up some color, but this is more to add the effect of water droplets. I sprinkled some water over the top and again, rolled the paper towel over the surface and that creates just some really cool water droplet effects where the water lifts up some of the color. Now I'm adding some Heidi Swap Color Shine. I haven't used this in a while. I forgot how beautiful it was and I'm putting lots and lots of the gold color all over the background. Once again, I dry it with my heat tool and then I roll the paper towel over the top. Now I'm adding a shimmers color. This is a shimmers color splash spray called Back in the Saddle. This is a little bit darker than the colors that I have on there. This is really just to add another color of gold, add some more variation. I want there to be lots of different colors of gold. I didn't want the background to look flat. So I did a lot of splattering of this color on the large area that I created. And since this went on for a while and I added lots and lots of these splatters, I didn't include all of the footage. I used my heat tool. I used the paper towel that helped to, again, lift up some of the color. And then I decided to go in with this Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. This one is called Walnut Gold. And again, this one is kind of dark. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to go quite this dark. So I used 
once again, my water bottle and the paper towel, and I lifted up some of the color. It might seem odd that I keep going back and forth between making the background lighter, making the background darker, lightening it up, darkening it, but this is my process. I like to try different things out. I like to try different colors. I like to have a variety of different colors on the layout, even though in the end, this all looks gold. You could see all of the different colors of gold. And this is just how I make my backgrounds. You could, if you wanted to, just stick with some lighter colors without all of this back and forth, but I kind of like the way it looks in the end. There were a few areas that I wanted to fade out a little bit. So I'm using some white gesso and a sponge. I wanted to fade out some of the color right around the edge of the layout. I wanted it to not necessarily be gone, but just to kind of fade it so that it looks very light so that the color is a little bit farther away from the edge than it is now. So I added a couple of layers of gesso and I also dabbed it in the middle a little bit again, for some interest and variation. I love adding white splatters to the background. This is watered down white acrylic paint. I like to use the scissors to tap the color onto the paper. It creates some very small splatters. All of the paints and mediums that I've used on the background so far dry very quickly. The white acrylic paint does take a little bit of time. I use my heat tool to help me out a little bit with that. And I think that it's important when you're drying something for a long time with the heat tool to make sure that you keep moving it around so it doesn't burn your page in one place. Now I'm adding some modeling paste to the background. I'm using a stencil that I made on my Silhouette Cameo. I do this a lot with notebook dividers, these plastic ones. They make a great stencil and this is I think a perfect Christmas background stencil. It has stars of different sizes and there's some dots mixed in as well. I'm trying to put a very light layer of modeling paste on this background because I know that I'm going to cover it with embossing powder and I don't want the modeling paste to be too heavy. I try to work fairly quickly because I don't want the modeling paste to start to dry before I add the embossing powder over the top. For this layout, I'm using a Martha Stewart white embossing powder. I've used this embossing powder so many times. I haven't finished it off, but I'm getting it pretty close to that. I knew that I wasn't worried about the stars in the background being super crisp, clear images. I kind of wanted the background to be muted and faded and maybe even look like a kind of a little bit blurry. And then I have the trees that I'm going to layer over the top. So I wasn't worried about having a little bit of extra embossing powder mixed in into the background, but I did want to get the excess embossing powder off. So I tapped the back a little bit sometimes, and that helped to loosen some of the trapped embossing powder, which I managed to get <laughs> all over my table. And then I used my heat tool and I embossed each of those stars. That took a little bit of time because there was actually a lot of embossing powder on this background. Here are all my trees. I'm going back in with the Vintage Photo Distress Ink and inking all of the edges because I didn't think that the trees were going to stand out enough from the background. Every month, subscribers to any of the My Creative Scrapbook kits have access to a number of new cut files. So I'm using one of the December cut files. It says Believe. I cut it out. I backed it with some of the pattern papers from the kit, and then I stitched the inside edge of each of the letters with some pink embroidery floss. If anyone is interested in seeing how I prepare a cut file from beginning to end, please let me know. It takes too long to show that on a regular video. The video would just get uh, super lengthy, but I would be more than happy to show you how I do it. It's super easy and I think that it adds a lot to the finished layout. I use Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide to ink up a circle to use as a mat for my photo. And then I also use a die cut that I had found in my room when I was cleaning it out and I thought that it was the perfect size for this photo. After I inked the edges of the round scalloped 
die cut that I used to mount my photo on, I began attaching some of the elements down to the page. I attached down the title using ATG adhesive, and then I used my ruler to make sure that I was putting this large tree right in the center of the page. Earlier, I tried a number of asymmetrical compositions for this page, but in the end, I decided that I really liked the way it looked with the large tree in the center. And then I began layering the other trees next to the large one in the center. After all the trees were attached down, I attached down that photo cluster, which I'm placing on the center of the largest tree. I'm so happy to finally have this photo attached down to a layout. I tried putting it in a wreath last month. It was a die cut wreath and I cut it irregularly to fit in that wreath and I didn't end up making a layout with that. And then I tried cutting it into a smaller circle and then I messed up the cutting. So I had to cut it into an even smaller circle. And luckily it seems to fit really well on this layout. And like I said, it finally has a home here. I added some silver stars to the tops of all the trees. I tried pink ones, but the pink was just a little bit too bold. Then I wanted to add lots and lots of jewels to all of the trees. I started off with some jewels that I got from Hobby Lobby. These are iridescent jewels. I used just the smaller ones. I love the way they have kind of a pink cast to them. And then I had some other jewels. They were... Again, clear, but there was a little bit of pink in them. And those I had in several different sizes. So I used the smallest one and the medium one. And you could see that I'm just scattering them all around all five of these trees. One of the things I love about Christmas layouts is that you can add lots and lots and lots of bling to them. And it rarely looks like too much bling just because Christmas has a lot of sparkle and shine to it. So I added a third type of jewel. This one is definitely pink. I had this one in a number of different sizes, I think three different sizes, and I used all three sizes on the trees, generally trying to put the smaller ones toward the top and the larger ones toward the bottom, but I do mix that up in some cases. The stars at the tops of the trees didn't have any adhesive on them, unlike the other jewels that were all self-adhesive. So I used some glossy accents to attach all of those down. I think that glossy accents is very effective at holding jewels like this down to layouts for the long run. Some of the other glues I've tried hold them initially, and then later on I find the jewels have come off of the page. Because the title of the layout is Believe, I felt like I had to include an image of Santa. I really liked this particular one where Santa has the happy face and the pink hat on his head. So I fussy cut the white border off. It just didn't work on this particular layout. And then I attached Santa down right on top of the E. And since I forgot that I wanted to add Santa to the layout, I had to remove a couple of jewels so that he could sit flat against that tree. I had one jewel that I lost the adhesive from when I transferred it, so I used some glossy accents to hold that little jewel down. And now I am adding some jewels all around the photo. I felt like I really wanted my photo to be the star of the page, so I found these strips of adhesive gems and I absolutely loved putting these down. They went down really easily. They hold really, really well. And I think that they added a really nice sparkly element to the photo. When I put down the third strip, there was a little gap between that strip and the first one that I put down. There wasn't quite enough room for three jewels and then two jewels wasn't enough. So I decided that I would cut a strip of three jewels, and then I maneuvered some of the surrounding jewels around a little bit until all three jewels fit in that spot. And I don't think that you could tell, and I was very happy with this addition to the page. Then I was thinking I didn't want the cut file to be the only thing on the page that didn't have any kind of embellishment on it, but I didn't want to go crazy adding lots and lots of bling because I already have lots of bling on the Christmas trees and around the photo. So I found some really teeny tiny little clear rhinestones and I put three of these on each of the letters. I added a bow from my stash on top of the photo. I attached that down and then I glued down a rhinestone right in the center of the bow. 
And then I thought I would add one of the little sentiments that was in the kit that says magical Christmas to the layout. I thought it would look nice right underneath the photo. So I removed the jewels that were underneath the photo. I inked the edges of the sentiment with some Victorian velvet. I attached it down and that's the last touch. This layout is complete and here are some close-ups. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who watches my videos. I appreciate all the likes and I absolutely love reading the comments. They really make my day and they really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. In the description box, you'll find a link to the My Creative Scrapbook website and then also a link to all of their social media. I highly recommend that you take a peek at their website. They have so many gorgeous kits. I also recommend checking out their Instagram for lots and lots of inspiration. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.